Tonight, we're raising the curtain on how our theaters have gotten creative to survive during the COVID-19 pandemic and looking ahead to the future. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jason Martinez, and let's start with Center City's Theater District. Here's our Jeff Cole. Remember this? Just got our tickets to Hamilton, baby. But I'm glad I got here when I did. People desperate to score Hamilton tickets back in 2019 before the coronavirus robbed us of so many of life's necessities and pleasures. Now, the posters are gone from in front of the theaters, replaced by signs promising the curtain will rise again. And the people who work in those now shuttered playhouses are hurting. A recent Brookings report estimates the fine and performing arts industries lost one and a half million jobs and more than $42 billion in sales between April and July. The same report also providing a state by state breakdown found in that three month period. Pennsylvania, Delaware, and New Jersey saw more than 170,000 arts jobs vanish. We had to shut down. And no one knows it better than Ann Ewers, president and CEO of the Kimmel Center, and Paige Price. PTC is uh, in its 46th year. The producing artistic director of the Philadelphia Theater Company. Oh, we were so innocent back then, you know. We had just closed our second production of the of the of the year and we're getting ready to rehearse the uh, the wolves which was coming up next we had record turnout with audiences we had great shows wonderful reviews it was actually leading to one of our best years ever everything shut down we are a 93 percent earned model and so think about that every earned revenue line was immediately gone. Both had to get creative to keep their organizations afloat. The Kimmel Center, with all of its stages bare, had to cancel more than 1,000 performances. That's almost a million tickets and make deep cuts. It still wasn't enough. So we thought we need to do a uh, COVID relief campaign and raise $10 million. So we have raised 5.5 right now hardest money I've ever had to raise. The Philadelphia Theater Company, which has its home at the Suzanne Roberts Theater, also had to think fast. Every week we built a new budget. It was exhausting. So we built a new budget and we built a new plan. They also raised the curtain virtually, turning a planned production of The Wolves, put on hold by the pandemic, from an in-person experience to a digital one. Okay, everybody, we're gonna send you a kit and you're gonna set up a studio in your house and we're gonna figure it out. But that was a luxury the Kimmel Center, home to Broadway touring productions, as well as its resident companies or RESCOs for short, including the Philadelphia Orchestra and Philadanko didn't completely have. We present, we don't own content. So we created Save Our Stages uh, and, and did a lot of digital work from that sharing what our RESCOs were doing, um, working with other performing arts centers, to, you know, to create a collaborative uh, piece. And now the stage is set to transition from virtual performances to raising the curtain on a real stage. But that might take some convincing for audience members, something Paige Price isn't a stranger to. In the wake of the September 11th attacks, she was part of a team that went on tour tasked with showing the nation Broadway was back open and safe for audiences. It was a soul searching moment of, about what it meant to be an artist in that time. So I see this time as similar in that way when, uh, when the wound and this one is uh, so much greater uh, because it affects the globe, right? This time, a key component of getting back to live in-person performances is COVID-19 vaccine distribution. I know from research that I've been following that 95% of arts patrons say they're going to get vaccinated. It's going to be safer to be in the theater than it is in the grocery store. Now, after more than a year of struggle, hope is not just on the horizon. It's knocking at their stage doors, and one of the shows might sound familiar. Opening with Hamilton doesn't get any better than that. Jeff Cole, Fox 29 News. 
And theater doesn't just thrive in the city, it also flourishes in the suburbs. Dawn Timoney takes us to the Bucks County Playhouse. Nestled along the banks of the Delaware in the middle of idyllic New Hope sits the Bucks County Playhouse, enchanting audiences since 1939. Its location and rich history have helped the theater attract famous names and the general public alike, including local girl turned princess Grace Kelly, who once worked at the Playhouse as an apprentice. And the Bucks County Playhouse was still going strong at the start of 2020. Just ask its producing director, Alexander Frazier. We were in the midst of the biggest show that we'd ever done, and our dress rehearsal was on Friday, March 13th, and that was it. And we thought, oh, we'll be, we'll be back in two weeks. The coronavirus pandemic bringing everything to a grinding halt. It was evident to Robin Goodman, the Playhouse's executive producer, that difficult calls would have to be made. It was very painful. It was a very, it just shutting the, making the decision of exactly when to shut the show down because there were some parts of the company that wanted to do one public performance. Who could blame them? But they did shut down and the producing team put their heads together. At first it felt like you were being kicked in the stomach and uh, there was a lot of depression and, and then, you know, Alex and Josh and I said, we have to pick ourselves up and figure out how we survive this. And they did. We were able to raise $1.65 million from our community for our Playhouse pandemic campaign, which allowed us to keep our staff intact. Another boon to the Bucks County Playhouse, again its location, with less strict guidelines in the suburbs than in Philadelphia. It's been able to offer in-person comedy shows and concerts. Obviously no intermission, no food and drink allowed. It also had to look at ventilation inside the theater. We have above hospital grade filtration system in our theater and we have a different system in the audience, a different system on stage, backstage. The Playhouse now ready to raise the curtain on a full production in June for the first time since the pandemic. A new one woman show, Is There Still Sex in the City? Written by and starring Carrie Bradshaw's creator, Candace Bushnell. Well, the feeling that I get is that there's definitely sex in Bucks County. <laughs> the Bucks County Playhouse is celebrating its upcoming show and the promise of more in the fall in a way both Candace and Carrie would approve of with Cosmos and Cupcakes from Magnolia Bakery. Dawn Timoney, Fox 29 News. And coming up, we'll hear from an Oscar nominee who has found an artistic home at the Bucks County Playhouse and also still ahead, making sure theater is inclusive and accessible to all. We'll introduce you to a woman who has made it one of her life's missions. While the whole world has been trying to manage the coronavirus pandemic, America has been grappling with our race reality. Shana Humphreys has the story of one woman trying to make the performing arts inclusive for all while taking a top job in our theater community during these difficult times. I tell people all the time, like if you would have told me you're going to be the executive director of Theater Philadelphia, but it's going to be in your office, in your house, which at that point didn't even exist. And the office will also be virtual kindergarten. I would have been like, I don't understand. In what circumstance would that ever be the case? Why would I be doing that? <laughs> but here I am. Lanish Miller White landed her dream job, running the agency whose job it is to be the cheerleader for Philadelphia's theater scene. Tough during a pandemic, but Theater Philadelphia wasted no time taking action to help those in need. After the pandemic hit, um, the board and the staff created the emergency relief program, which provides micro grants to individual theater workers. Um, and that's everyone, that's actors, directors, ushers, anyone who was making theater income that lost it due to COVID. Miller White has long been an advocate for the arts, first falling in love with Philly's theater scene while a student at Temple, before spending more than a decade at Painted Bride Art Center, when in 2013, she and some friends saw a void. It felt like all of the stories that were about black life and black culture were very, very heavy. And so Theater in the X was born, breaking barriers in West Philadelphia, offering programs, most of them free, and presented in Malcolm X Park. Their biggest project so far, the West Philly play, which started with a simple question. What aspects of West Philly life, culture, and history do you want to see? 
The response was phenomenal. It was all supposed to go from script to stage last summer, but that was before COVID-19 and before the deaths of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd at the hands of police sparked civil unrest, demands for change, and an end to systemic racism and inequity. Watching it all unfold, Miller White and some friends got to work. The Black Theater Alliance, it really started with the group of us just like sharing memes and venting about the situations. They turned that frustration into an organization that provides micro grants to black artists and mentoring to the next generation. Meanwhile, Miller White is optimistic that we are witnessing meaningful change. I really do believe that people, a lot of people have kind of seen the light finally. They have finally had the realization of ways that they have been contributing to the issues. And there's even more hope. Theater in the X is looking forward to premiering the West Philly play, incorporating last year's civil unrest into its narrative, moving into a permanent space in West Philly, and being back in Malcolm X Park this summer, while Theater Philadelphia is ready for the curtain to rise on a new season. Shayna Humphreys, Fox 29 News. Still to come, you first fell in love with her on the silver screen, but did you know she has a love for our area? We're sitting down with Oscar-nominated actress Marsha Mason. They're a Broadway power couple who've chosen to make Philadelphia home, and they've managed to still keep their creative juices flowing despite the pandemic. Alex George introduces us to them. March of 2020, Rob McClure was getting ready to open on Broadway in the musical version of Mrs. Doubtfire after a massively successful out-of-town tryout. They even managed to get three preview performances in before the shutdown hit. The producers came into rehearsal in the middle of the day and said, uh, leave everything right where it is and go home. Uh, we will be back. We just don't know when. More than a year later, Rob and his wife, actress Maggie Lakis, are still playing the waiting game. In the East Pass Young home, they've spent the last decade renovating. Not far from where their love story first began in a production of Grease. The couple choosing to raise their young daughter here. So Rob has become familiar with Amtrak, commuting to Manhattan to star in Broadway shows with occasional performances in Philly like back in 2018 when they appeared together at the Academy of Music in Something Rotten. So you have a little bit of hometown pride and you bring your cast there and you say like, this is my home. And so you really hope like, that the please audience- Please be cool, please be cool, please the be audience cool. Be great. And they were so wonderful. So good. And while they've been performing virtually during the pandemic, they miss those Philly audiences. Soon enough, they'll be back in front of audiences. Rob will be performing his cabaret show with Maggie outside at the Delaware Theater Company in Wilmington while he waits for Mrs. Doubtfire to reopen. And as for that commute... Uh, I always tease my friends who live in, you know, Brooklyn or in the, in the Heights or uh, in West Orange or Maplewood. I always say, okay, you text me when you get home and I'll text you when I get home and then we'll compare rents. <laughs> <laughs> and, and square footage, yeah. And square footage, exactly. <laughs> Alex George, Fox 29 News. And Rob and Maggie aren't the only performers who can't get enough of our area. Chris O'Connell spoke with Oscar-nominated actress Marsha Mason about her love for Philly and Bucks County. Pennsylvania is really lucky because you have fabulous theaters. Academy Award-nominated actress Marsha Mason should know, first falling in love with our area in the 1960s while playing at the Forest Theater. It was a great learning experience for me, and I learned, I learned a lot being on the road. Um, and I think the road is, is a good place where you can learn, and I, I love regional theater. That passion has remained constant through a storied career on stage and screen in movies like Cinderella Liberty, which earned Mason her first Oscar nod, followed quickly by three more nominations for her star turns in movies written by her then husband, Neil Simon, The Goodbye Girl. I have really, you know, wonderful memories and working with Dreyfus. Uh, Richard Dreyfus was just, uh, we, we had a chemistry that was just fantastic. Chapter two, and only when I laugh, which brings us back to her connection to the Delaware Valley and the Bucks County Playhouse. My ex-husband, Neil Simon, always felt very fond of Bucks County because his plays started there. So I have a very fond feeling for Bucks County. 
and Mason has found an artistic home at the Playhouse, while also appearing in hit shows like Netflix, Grace and Frankie, until the pandemic disrupted filming. But that hasn't slowed her down, acting in, directing virtual plays and online benefits. But Marsha Mason knows she's lucky to be working. It's been tough, and it only because uh, on the commercial side, uh, it's been very, very difficult for the costumers, the wig makers, the, you know, uh, uh, all the staff. However, there is lots of optimism. I know that Broadway's going to open probably in the fall, and I think that the other theaters are going to come, uh, will be open shortly after that. And like her fellow artist, Mason is looking forward to that day when theaters reopen. Chris O'Connell, Fox 29 News. And Marsha Mason isn't just busy acting and directing, she's also teaching the next generation via Zoom. And speaking of the next generation, it all started in Delco. Yep. <laughs> the one and only. Yeah. Meet a Penn State senior with stars in his eyes and the talent to make his mark as an actor. So what about the next generation of performers and artists? Don Timoney sat down with one local rising star about to graduate. I am from Wallingford, Pennsylvania in Delaware County. I'm a senior musical theater major at Penn State. I will graduate the second weekend in May of 2021. It is both very exciting and uh, pretty nerve wracking and ter terrifying. One thing's for certain, Aiden Cole has talent and passion on his side. His heart is set on performing for audiences on Broadway, and it's been as far back as he can remember. It was my passion, it was my everything, you know, it was all I wanted to do. And he's making his dreams a reality, performing in college productions. We did Legally Blonde the musical, and I played Emmett Forrest, who's kind of her love interest and the TA. And I think uh, of my four years, I think that might have been my favorite. Building up a reel, a website, and an impressive body of work to get his face and name out there, which the pandemic has made tougher. We normally end with a senior showcase where the 12 of us would go to New York and we do two performances for about 200 casting agents and um, directors. And so instead of that, we are going to do it from school, but we are going to film it and record it. But all of this uncertainty is leaving Aiden far from discouraged. I've realized this is what I want to do and without it I am missing a part of what I really love to do and I, I'm gonna keep fighting until I can hopefully do it again. He already has his sights set on one role. One of my all-time favorite shows is uh, Stephen Sondheim's Sunday in the Park with George and I would love to play that role, George Surratt. And we know his Delco friends and family, including his proud dad, our very own Jeff Cole, will be cheering Aiden on when he makes his first bow on Broadway or gets a role on a hit TV show. Dawn Timothy, Fox 29 News. And we want to wish Aiden and his classmates the best of luck. We know we'll be seeing their names and lights very soon. We'll be right back. That does it for us. For more information on any of the stories you've seen here, visit fox29.com. I'm Jason Martinez. Thanks again for joining us.